Welcome to The Primal Show with today's guest, Chef Pete Evans, uh, all the way in Australia. Uh, very glad that you're on The Primal Show. Um, you have been basically all over the news lately. I really wanted to have you on the show, uh, kind of to discuss what's going on down in Australia, as well as uh, what's, go what, what, what's going on with the paleo diet, specifically in Australia, because there's been so, it's been under, I, I think, major attack. And I wanted to have you on the show to let everybody know what's going on down there. And I also wanted uh, to have you on to discuss all the different books you're putting out because I'm a big fan of yours. Um, you know, I like the component that you're putting out there of eating healthy and mixing that with fitness because I think it's uh, um, definitely a lot of people are missing the boat when it you know, comes to combining both of them. So, um, you know, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's an honor to be on your show, so thank you. Yeah. Um, tell us a little bit about, um, let's start off with your books. Um, you've released uh, two or three, I think, this year, um, kind of focusing on the family and uh, paleo every day, and, um, and it's called The Paleo Chef. You have three different books out right now. Uh, tell us a little bit about what they're about and, um, you know, uh, what you're, you know, what, yeah, just tell us what they're all about. <laughs> sure. I, I love writing cookbooks. I've, this is probably my 12th or 13th I've done over the last 10 or 12 years. Um, as, a, as a chef, it's, it's something that I, I am very proud of, to be able to share recipes that people can put into their uh, cooking repertoire. I mean, this is... Uh, this is what we're trained to do, basically. Uh, I've been cooking professionally for over 25 years and cooked over a million meals with these two hands. Yes. Uh, so what we try to do is, as chefs and what I understand our job to do if you're a celebrity chef or a, a chef that puts out uh, books is first know your market, uh, first and foremost. You know, you look at many cookbooks that are around uh, and some are, are aimed at chefs, you know, some of the three Michelin star chefs. And, and as a home cook, you're just like, wow, that's a beautiful coffee table book, but there's no, no possible way I'm probably ever going to try to replicate that into my home cooking. Nice. Um, and I learned a long time ago that for me, what I wanted to do was educate people in how to cook beautiful home-cooked food that isn't scary, that is accessible, that is just absolutely delicious, and that they can gain confidence in the kitchen, uh, learning how to combine flavours together, how to use some really simple cooking techniques and and really start exploring the globe for spices herbs and and really making beautiful flavor combinations i mean that's the, that's my job and that's what gets me up in the, in the morning every day with a smile on my face um and you've done a great job of that i mean I, I didn't mention that you have literally cooked for some of the top people all around the world i think oprah i read about and uh, many others i mean that's quite an accomplishment and uh it is such a great feeling to to cook and and to not only cook but also to promote optimal health while you're cooking you know and that that's really what the paleo diet's all about optimal health i think and uh, consuming foods that are, uh, you know, um, inflammation free, I like to call it. So yeah, for sure. And, and that's been my focus for the last four years. Um, my partner, Nicola Robinson, uh, introduced me to the paleo, uh, lifestyle. Basically she was reading Nora Gagaudis's book, which I still think is probably the best, uh, on, on the topic of, uh, primal and paleo, uh, lifestyle, uh, which is called primal body, primal mind. And I read that. And I was like, wow, this, this actually makes a bit of sense. Let's let's test this on ourselves, and and the results were remarkable. And then I thought, and I looked at what was out there on the market as far as uh, paleo uh, cookbooks, and I realised there was no real, I guess, professional chef that had um, um, delved into this market uh, and delved into this lifestyle. And I thought that this this has the potential of um, of redefining my career yes. um, and it took me a year before we basically came out and said we were paleo because <laughs> um, I've been working for a long time, I've been in TV and, and media and I was like if I come out as the paleo chef uh, there will be backlash, I, I, I knew there'd be backlash, I didn't know that there'd be this much sure. um, <laughs> but, it, but it was, a, but it was um, I was compelled to do it, I thought you know what it's, it's no point keeping it a secret. 
anyone that has decided the paleo lifestyle really wants to shout it from the rooftops and tell their friends and family because uh, so many people are benefiting from this, as you know, and um, people watching this show know. Um, and I'm in a, quite a unique position, especially in Australia, to have a, a large, uh, I guess, profile over here that we can release a cookbook or, or spread some messages and some information through our social media sites or websites or magazine interviews or newspaper interviews or radio interviews that will get people thinking. Um, and then hopefully it'll get them researching and studying and, and really trying to try to delve to the bottom and, uh, <laughs> and, and, and understand why this works and, and potentially why there's such a backlash against it. Yeah, I, I mean, I totally know what you mean. I mean, there's really no better feeling than to spread the word of paleo into mainstream um, society. And I do that personally by putting out products that have paleo all over them because I'm proud about our products. And seeing our paleo bread was on Dr. Oz last year was like one of the best things that I could have ever asked for. And then seeing our, we have this new uh, coconut flake cereal on the shelf next to Cheerios, it's kind of like, it's such a huge accomplishment like for myself personally because we're really helping to change the way people eat and we're doing it by giving them foods or recipes in your case um, and a message that's really simple for them to understand but we're giving them foods that can help them transition from a ma mainstream way of eating to a paleo one and we're doing, we're doing we're making it easy for people and I think that's the biggest fear it's like paleo isn't easy or oh my gosh I have to cook all the time when there's really things at every grocery store you know in the world that you can easily be paleo and you just need to know the guidelines and and I think people really get you know caught up and this is just too difficult I can't do it you know what what about when I travel you know and and uh, giving people you know tips and tricks uh, for when they travel or you know showing them how to you know make paleo food choices when they're eating out it's it's just because it kind of the light clicks on for them it's like oh my gosh I can do this you know and not only can I do it I can make this a way uh, of life for me you know and uh, I don't know about yourself but once you explain it and the basics of it it's like okay you can't have cheese but you can have more avocado and you know bacon on occasion and you can have all the fresh fish and you know small amount of berries and nuts and you know but you can't have beans okay but you can have delicious you know organic grass-fed steak you know it's like okay which one do you want beans or or steak you know it's it's the trade-off is it's it's very easy uh, what do you what do you think about that well, everything comes down to a choice. Each and every time you um, decide to put uh, the next mouthful yeah. uh, of food either onto your fork or between your chopsticks or onto your spoon or in your glass, I mean, it all it all comes down to a choice. And I think that um, it's a, it's a wonderful time. I mean, 2015. I mean, paleo has hit the mainstream, um, and there's a plethora of books that are that are that are in the top. 10 bestsellers in the United States. In Australia, my, my books with, uh, are the number one sellers. Now, what that says to me is that people are embracing this lifestyle. There's a hunger for, for this information. Uh, people are buying these books uh, for their friends and family to say, hey, listen, this is what it's about. You know, Because generally the media has, um, has a very distorted view of what paleo is, there's always a picture of a caveman and, and slabs and slab, <laughs> slabs of meat, and and the old paleolithic man died at the age of 25 or 30. You know, you know ha, ha, the same old the same old crap yeah. each and every time, and never do they really talk about what it actually is. Now, my definition of it, uh, which is the same of many others, it's it's about embracing the foods that um, our bodies have evolved to eat and, and basically uh, removing any foods that, that may cause inflammation. Right. And at, at each and every generation, we're finding that um, uh, we're reacting to these these food groups that were once touted as healthy, not in a, in a great way anymore. Um, and I don't really bang the drum too much like, you shouldn't be eating this or you've got to be eating this. All I do is is take the information and I've, I've like yourself, 
worked with some of the, the best minds in the world, um, from cardiologists to neurologists to science writers to uh, medical doctors to who, whoever they are. And, and they're all basically saying the same thing. They're speaking the same language. My job as a chef is to take that information and put it into exciting recipes for people to try at home. I am not the expert. I, I, I am an expert as being a chef, which is why I'm very confident that I can release cookbooks on this subject or get up on stage and, and show people how to cook this food and also then bring in the scientists or the doctors or the nutritionists or the dietitians that can talk about the science behind it. I mean, I've studied at the Institute for Integrative Nutrition and become a qualified health coach. Sure. But first and foremost, I'm a chef. And teaching people beautiful recipes is, is yeah. basically my purpose and, and what I enjoy doing. Um, yeah, and you know, one, one, one area, though, of confusion I find with a lot of the paleo books out there, um, and this, this isn't really so much within any of your books, but I find that they're just over inundated with too much sugar. And mm -hmm. what, what happens is these, you know, they're like paleo cookies and brownies, but they're, they're putting all this sugar that doesn't need to be in there. And once sure. again, paleo really should be an anti-inflammation diet. And when you're adding sugar in there, all of a sudden you're getting inflammation back into a diet. And there wasn't this overabundance of honey and maple syrup. I mean, think about the caveman. It was probably long, long periods in between the time he, he could gorge on honey. But it was, this, it, it was a very long time in between these, you know, basically binge feedings on, on honey or maple syrup or anything out there, I, I find that it's kind of a disservice. And I, I see why the media can sometimes um, really harp on paleos because peop some people aren't getting the results they need with paleo because it's not being given to, to them with – it's being given to them with all the sugar. Sure. And, and – what I can talk about with with what you're saying there is that everyone comes to this at a different point in their life. Everyone's journey to paleo, so to speak, um, will 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 be very very different. You know, some people it might take them two to three years to transition all the way through. Yeah. And you will find that potentially some recipe books that do have the the honeys or the maple syrups or the dates or the, those things is the thing that actually gets these people from one lifestyle to the other, and it might take them three years to get there, you still by putting the bliss balls or the, or the, the, the cookies or this, but at least they're, they're making wiser choices to get to where they want to go. Whereas some people, like instance for me, I could do it. <laughs> cold, cold turkey, you know, I, I never really had a sweet tooth. So I, I wouldn't be too critical of of that because I would rather someone take three to four to five years to get to the place that they need to by doing it gradually and still incorporating the foods that give them that pleasure uh, if, if that's what they need to do for their journey. Oh, I couldn't agree yeah. with you more, but I'm going to disagree on the fact that giving them foods with sugar is, is a, a sticking point for me because we have great uh, ingredients, as you know, like organic stevia leaf, monk fruit. We have uh, maple sugar. We have these like coconut sh uh, nectar and, and coconut sugar, things that are very low glycemic that can keep the inflammation level down, yet they're choosing honey and maple syrup, which is a better choice than refined white sugar, but it's still sugar. And what happens is I find that these recipe books are being given to – like family members, right? And they go on eating paleo and they start gaining weight. Or you look at the paleo author themselves, and this, is, this isn't this is you by any means, but you look at the paleo author themselves and they're heavy. And it's like, they're not, and the vegans are bagging on these other paleo wow. authors. And one of the reasons I wanted to have you on the show is because you practice what you preach. And I find that that to be so important, not only in food uh, and consuming the proper uh, amounts of food, the proper calories, um, but also in working out, you know, too, you you have a, you live a very active lifestyle. And to be honest with you, I'm just tired of vegans beating up on us. You know, you got guys like Durian Ryder and, and all these different nutritionists who are picking on us for being paleo and living a, a lifestyle that leads to optimal health. And these nutritionists, you look at physically the way they look and they're not practicing what they preach. They're not living a healthy lifestyle and they're consuming grains. They're full of inflammation 
I mean, and it's just sad. And it's it's it doesn't need to be that way. All we're trying to do is give people a way of eating that doesn't promote inflammation. And to that point, I herniated my L5 S1 disc, okay? And uh, I did it moving a bag of grain back in like 2010, which is kind of ironic if you think about it. This uh, I run the Julian Bakery and um, we started off as a traditional bakery and this bakery was handed off to me. And before we went grain free, uh, I was literally moving this bag of grain kind of to the side and herniating my back. And I started looking for ways to, guess what, get rid of the inflammation. And I ended up, um, you know, looking, I ended up finding it with paleo, basically. You know, I don't take any Advil. I don't take any, you know, drugs. I am completely pain-free. I've completely recovered. Um, and not only that, I lost uh, almost, you know, 35 pounds. So, um, and, you know, I'm in the best shape of my life. My goal was always to have a six-pack. And, and with paleo, uh, I've been able to achieve that. I mean, I'm sure you've seen the results. I mean, you know firsthand, actually, the results. Um, can you talk a little bit about some of your, you know, uh, your followers and the results sure. that you've seen? Sure. Let's step back a second as well. I mean, what you're talking about, the vegans or the nutritionists and stuff, you know what? Don't ever worry about it. <laughs> that's, that's, that's my advice. You know, focus on the positives and not the negatives. Um, we've got a... We've designed a 10-week program with Nora Gagoudis and my fitness um, uh, coach, Luke Hines, who's a beautiful man as well. And in our 10-week program, we don't have any paleo treats or paleo cookies or, or hardly any fruit except for the, for the good quality fat ones like avocados and olives or the, oh, yeah. the, the, the low sugar ones, cucumbers, zucchinis, tomatoes, for instance. Um, and in that 10-week program, we, we teach people that, that, you know, for 10 weeks, we want to get your body into the, the best place so we, we can reduce your inflammation. Um, and we have seen, I mean, we've got tens of thousands of people that are doing the, the, this program all around the world and then the post program. And it's, it's remarkable, the changes. And I share a story each and every day from somebody that's adopted the paleo lifestyle, whether it's our program or whether they've read a book and just adopted it. Sure. Um, and and it, it's, it's, it's astounding. It, it is absolutely astounding that the changes that people go through, um, is, some are small and, and, and some are quite large. And I've never, ever said that it'll cure anything. But what I will say is it has the potential to improve your health and we have thousands upon thousands upon thousands of, of emails and success stories coming through um, over the last few months of people that are saying it's improved their you know, type 2 diabetes, their autoimmune issues, their behavioural uh, issues in their children. Um, right. You name it, people <laughs> are saying that it is helping them, you know, and and. I find that fascinating and, and you know, it's, it's powerful and it's what I love about it the most is it's getting people back into the kitchen to cook real food. I mean, we saw Jamie Oliver um, do this around the world by getting people to, to try to ditch the fast food and get back into the kitchen to cook. Now, where I see paleo is the next step. You know, it's the next step in the evolution of people cooking because now they're cooking for health. Before they were cooking for flavour and taste, but now, you know, we can still include the flavour and the taste, but now we can start educating people about how food can be medicine or a form of medicine. Absolutely. And, and as I say to people as well is, you know, paleo is, is wonderful, but it's, it's one part of the package. You can eat all the paleo food in the world, but if you're in a, in a relationship that's not working for you or you're in a, a job that isn't fulfilling or rewarding or you're not doing any, any movement exercises or you're not taking time out to do things that, that nourish you right. holistically, then you may still suffer disease or inflammation or, or, or unrest. You know, So I, I always see paleo as... As from a dietary point of view, it, it's it's the first step in potentially uh, opening up opening up yourself to to some massive change. And usually, when people change the way they eat, they have the renewed energy, they have a renewed focus or a renewed passion for life to then be able to achieve or chase down the dreams that they once thought were possible, probably 
impossible because they didn't have the energy to do it. And that's what excites me about this whole movement is all of a sudden you might have people going back to school, you know, they might be in their 50s or 60s and they're like, you know what, I'm ready to go back to university and study the thing because I've got the energy to do it. Yeah. Or I want to start create, writing music or, or, or painting or, or whatever it may be. You know, that's what excites me. And um, I think we're, we're, we're in the midst of a, of a, a fantastic movement. Um, I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, personally, I when I was consuming gluten and grains, I would have a on my energy level. I would actually feel like I, I would wanted to fall asleep right after my my lunch. You know, I'd have a sandwich, and I literally feel like I, I wanted to pass out. And I had been that way all throughout school. Um, I had kind of cloudy brain fog, and come to find out, it was all related to gluten. Now I'm not a celiac, but I am wheat intolerant. Once I started doing an elimination diet by removing the, the things that were not paleo out of my diet, uh, all of a sudden that brain fog went away. My energy level came back. I had energy all day. I felt like working out, and the fat dropped off easily. And uh, I wasn't gorging myself on too much fat or, you know, going um, – I, I was following a low-sugar, low-carb approach – but I was still moderating my calories and I had tremendous success and the energy was sustained all day. I didn't have these uh, spikes and, and probably a lot of that had to do with also my blood sugar levels were a lot more consistent because I wasn't spiking my blood sugar with grains. So um, tell us a little bit about what the um, nutritionists are, are saying down in Australia because I know there has been a little bit of controversy, you know, and, and obviously people attacking you and um, – I love to kind of hear what they're saying because I think it's interesting because, I mean, it's also being said here in, you know, in the United States, but um, what's happening down there in Australia? Um, it's the same old, same old. It's, it's, it's media um, creating a sensational headline story. Yeah. If, once you know how it works, it's, it, <laughs> you, you don't even worry about it. It's because you understand – why why it's happening um, as far as people like uh, different organizations um, coming out to to slam this I mean you only have to read books like uh, Denise Minger's death by food pyramid um, you, d you only have to peel back the okay. covers a little bit to understand exactly why the backlash is happening and um, at the end of the day I'm an easy target for for a lot of people to take a swipe at because I am a chef. I'm not a. I don't have a PhD. I don't. I'm not a. Uh, I haven't been to university for four to six years to get some letters after my name. Sure. Um, but you know, and and that's fine. I've, the more the media um, and the attacks happen, the more that this is pushing it out into the mainstream. So I am, I am happy that. <laughs> that this is happening and each and every time it does it I, I sort of have a bit of a, a bit of a chuckle going you guys are actually making this uh, they're the catalyst for this they're the catalyst to get it into mainstream and they're doing the work that I couldn't possibly do by myself so I, keep I, it coming guys <laughs> I, 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 I love you all and and, um, and I also understand that they're coming from a place of fear yeah. um, which is, is completely understandable because more and more research is coming out, and you know it yeah. each and every day. There's there's a new study that that backs up what uh, Lauren Cadane has talked about, what Nora Gugardis has talked about, what Rob Wolf has talked about, what um, Dr. Amy Byers, what uh, Professor Martha Herbert is talking about, um, Gary Tobbs, all of these people, and I could list off. Uh, Hundreds of these 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 beautiful people from around the world that are, are treating people and using this as a form of um, a form of uh, one of their tools for creating life changing change yeah. in people. Um, they know this works, and well, they have the results to back it too. <laughs> you know, and I always I. I love Tom Norton's Wisdom of Crowds talk. And if you, you haven't seen it, I, I think it's fascinating and I, I encourage everyone to watch it. Uh, it goes for 40 minutes and, and he talks about the anointed. And he talks about how well, the wisdom of crowds and with social media these days that 
if you want to get some information and, and actually get the truth, and it's not that hard to find. Yeah. Um, so uh, I'm happy to be the punching bag at the moment for <laughs> for this movement. Um, some people might say that I'm giving paleo a bad name, and I, and I never I never engage with the um, the negativity to really. Um, I might just point out a, a few of their inaccuracies sure. uh, and, and maybe poke, poke <laughs> a little bit just to stir the pot, just to... to um, the analogy that I have is, and I taught this to my kids, is I teach them how to surf. And I was teaching them to jump off the rocks into the ocean uh, when the waves are coming in. And when I was doing that with my kids the, fir the first time I did it, their, their first instinct when the wave was coming was to turn around and run and 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 i said you can never do that and i said what you need to do is plant your feet firmly stand your ground and yeah. the wave will come and then it will retreat and then you take another step forward and another wave will come and you 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 stand stand firm and confident yeah. and and finally then you jump off and you're in the ocean if you catch the waves and and i have the same philosophy when it comes to anything negative you know i'm not going to run away and i'm also not going to fight but i'll very happy to stand my ground because we know this works and then it'll disappear like at the moment it's it's dissipated for a while we'll just keep moving forward keep sharing success story after success story or recipe after recipe and there'll be another wave it has to come and then you just stand tall and um hopefully and i guess the proof is in the pudding our, sure. our, our program is selling like hotcakes. The, the cookbooks are selling like hotcakes. We're getting emails from thousands and thousands of people and that are sharing their success stories. Do you know how many people I've heard that this hasn't worked for? Apart from the, the general detoxing phase over the two to four weeks where they say they might feel nauseous or, or they might get a little bit lightheaded or they might feel uh, get a cold or some sort of symptoms come up during that detox phase, which we, which we talk about through... Um, through the education process anyway. But the amount of people that I've asked or for anybody that this hasn't worked for, if they've done it for 6 to 12 months and they've done it 100%. Yeah, no, I believe it. <laughs> I, think, know, I think you're right, though. I think you're right, you know, to, to bring up the fear factor because these people that are going against you are basically afraid that what they've been teaching for years is wrong. And if it's wrong, guess what? That means that they're probably going to go out of business. <laughs> people are going to stop well, looking to them for advice, or they're going to convert over and start helping people properly. But well, the the, the, the smart ones are switching over, and and the it is exciting to see. But the, but um, you know, I've, I've got a friend who's a GP, a medical doctor here in Australia. He's been using this for fifteen years as one of his tools with conventional medicine to help treat his patients. And he's busy <laughs> because people are, uh, are sending their friends and their families to see this man. Uh, I've got dietitians that are registered in Australia under uh, that their organisation is attacking, but they're standing up and saying, you know what, we're using this because we're actually getting results. We're getting better results, faster results, more sustainable results from the people that we're treating using this as one of our tools. Um, and I always say paleo is, is just one, one tool um, that people can use to, to increase their health or improve their health. Um, and it's it's a it's a wonderful time because this is there's this melting pot and yeah. and there's a massive change happening and it, and it, it's super exciting it's super exciting so you're um, actually so you're about um, three years older than me so uh, four, 41 looks like yep. uh, I'm 38 and uh, looks like we're both family men uh, how many kids do you have? Two? I've got two girls. Two yeah. girls? Okay. Yeah, I have a three-year-old baby girl. Has your um, has your motivation changed since you've had kids? Because I know mine has. Like, just I want to I want to spread the good news about paleo like everywhere, basically. You know, and I and my drive for helping people reach their 
their goal has never been more than, you know, and I'm doing it through food, just like yourself, but has never been more since I've had a child. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Because I see you released a family food book, which I'm sure, you know, the motivation is after your own family. But talk to us a little bit about how maybe your drive has changed and your, maybe any philosophy changes or... Sure. Uh, my oldest daughter was born with a tumor when she was <laughs> first day of, of being born, and she had an operation when she was two weeks old. Uh, had it removed, and um, her her system's been compromised ever since. Uh, my, my second daughter popped out a year and a half later, and um, she seems to have a, a, a stronger constitution, a stronger immune system. Um, and we've had we've had both girls tested and, and they have issues with dairy and also uh, gluten, which got us um, re- really fascinated about this, this, this paleo movement. And, and by adopting this into their lives, both of them are thriving, uh, uh, especially our firstborn, uh, Chili awesome. is her name. And, um, you know, it keeps us, keeps us moving forward. And, and my, my passion is for children's health and the coming generations. And we know that um, more and more children are being born with uh, learning difficulties, uh, allergies, um, yeah. more and more issues. <laughs> and, and I don't think it's normal. You know, the, the rate of the escalation of these is not normal. So what, what can we do to... to to give these kids the best possible chance uh, of reclaiming their health, if, if at all possible. Yeah. Um, and I noticed that every single basically family or children's cookbook on the market, especially in this country, um, is usually sugar-filled, dairy-filled, white flour-filled. You know, it's, it's, it's basically... Uh, 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 it's disgusting. It really is. <laughs> you, you could say that, and, and it, it's an easy sell for people, you know, if because that's what they think children need or want to eat. Cool. Um, but it's, it's disgusting because of what that food's doing to them. You know, we're bombarding kids at such a young age. I mean, my daughter's favorite thing, you know, she loves little pancakes. You know, she's like, you know, I want pancakes, so I started making, you know, little pancakes out of, you know, almond flour, coconut flour, and egg whites, and you know, throw a little stevia in there. Bam! You know, you have pancakes and they're fluffy and they're just like the ones that are in the store made by Kellogg's or whoever, you know, and it's just unfortunate. And you, you know, you talked a little bit about the rise in these birth defects and um, all the health issues that people are having. And I really think it's because uh, a majority of it is we have a, a prescription drug problem that's out of control. We have GMOs being saturated all throughout the market. I know it's a little bit better in Europe, and I don't know how it is in in Australia, but I mean it's it's extremely bad here. And um, we, you know, as a company, Julian Bakery, we do so much sourcing to make sure everything we do is GMO free. And um, I just I feel like it's one of the most important things we can do, other than obviously following, following like a paleo guidelines of how to eat. But tell us a little bit about how GMOs work over in Australia, and is it a real problem? Well, let me let me rewind a little bit because sure. the, the, the children thing is so important, and that's why we released um, a book last year called Family Food. It was to to put out a, a paleo inspired book that didn't seem like it was paleo. <laughs> you know, what I tried to do was was reinvent um, or paleofy all the family favourites, you know, from, from from toddlers all the way through to, to teenage years that would oh, keep the, awesome. whole, the whole family happy. And what was brilliant, I mean, the most popular recipe in there is butter chicken. We don't use butter, we use coconut oil. And there's about eight, eight or nine different spices in there. And, I, and I, I actually contemplated, should I put this recipe in, in the book or should I take it out because has it got too many spices in there? And it's the most popular book. And I get photos sent to me from, from parents of their two-year-olds and three-year-olds saying they love the butter chicken. And we serve it with cauliflower rice. Oh, and awesome. and you, you just see this, this, this picture of the kids with all the food over their face and, and the empty bowl. Um, and then we took it a, a step further. We've just released a, a, a baby and toddler book called Bubba Yum Yum, and I, I co-wrote that with um, um, 
two beautiful, beautiful dear friends of mine, Helen Patterin and Charlotte Carr. Helen Patterin is a naturopath and she's been working for 15 years in clinic uh, as part of the Mind Foundation. And Mind Foundation is, is an association, non-for-profit, that is uh, committed to helping families with um, children with behavioural issues and learning difficulties, uh, awesome. ADHD, autism, uh, dyslexia, uh, you, you name it. And it's a brilliant organisation and uh, we've taken all, uh, most the concepts from this and put it into the book and also Charlotte Carr who's, who's the co-author and a created by the Yum Yum, uh, she talks about her journey with her own son Willow that experienced um, issues um, as a youngster and how she used food as one form of medicine to help her little child, her, her little boy, reclaim his health, and it's a remarkable story. So we've we've put that out there as a as a nearly like a handbook or a guide for for parents um, when they've stopped breastfeeding or when they they're going on to solids. And we always promote breast breast milk as best. Um, for as long as possible, yeah. Uh, but but we notice that there's there's very few books out on the market for for uh, babies and toddlers after weaning that aren't filled with cereals, aren't filled with dairy, aren't filled with sugary substances. Um, and we're very proud of the book, and uh, it's available online through iBooks all around the world in 51 different territories. And we're releasing it in print uh, later this year, which is awesome. which, which is stoked. Um, as far as GMOs go, uh, we're pretty much like the rest of the world. We've had a, a major uh, law case happening in in Western Australia with a with a. Uh, a farmer that's neighbouring with a GMO. I mean, it's similar stuff that's happening in the USA, and uh, I don't need to repeat what's going on. Sure, but yeah. obviously, um, these companies have a lot of money, and we just uh, we've seen what's happened with Dr. Oz as yeah. well, um, and he's a dear friend of ours as well. And uh, I think people just need to be aware. And I think with correct labelling, I think then people can make the uh, the choices that they need to make. Um, and I know there's a lot of people that um, are flying the flag and, and really trying to get uh, correct labelling happening all around the world for GMOs. And I think if, if that can happen, then at least people can make an informed decision on whether they want to, again, it all comes down to choice, whether they want to include those type of foods in their diet or whether they'd like to uh, eliminate them completely. <laughs> I well, know which way. I, I, I steer. So. Yeah. Well, it's just scary because so many so-called health companies are now inserting what seem like, you know, good ingredients like, uh, you know, you think corn fiber sounds healthy, right? Well, what's the corn derived from? Is it GMO corn, you know? And there's so many of these unknown factors out there um, that you know, if simple labeling could could resolve it all, and it's so sad, and it could be so easily fixed. Because you're right. I mean, let let people choose. You know, why hide it? And, uh, and, and at the end of the day, it's really just to save a buck because GMO ingredients are much cheaper than than real food ingredients. You know, <laughs> grown yeah, well, pr grown you know, properly. Cig cigarettes are always going to be available, and it's up, it's it's a choice if people want to do that. You know, and GMO, as we know, it's it's there. I don't yeah. think will ever eradicate it so let's just make sure that they're labeled properly and then people can make informed decisions and you know if people are going to the farmers markets or organic stores or you know places like whole foods that, um, where they can hopefully um, have the right information then then certain people will shop there and other people will shop um, and and choose what whatever they want you know I don't I don't ram this down anybody's throat um, I, th I think I think the key is education and being aware and being informed, and then it's up to everyone. You know, I don't always eat paleo because I travel nine months of the year, yeah. and I cannot always get grass-fed and wild-caught and organic. You know, but I make the best possible choices with what is what is available. Yeah. But I don't. I never beat myself up and feel guilty and go, "Oh my God, I'm good." You know, but. And I, I, I don't want to live in that world either, and I, I, I don't think people people probably should either. But um, but I think if your if your foundation is correct and you, you're aware and you understand, and then ninety 
95% of the time you, you, you make the best possible choices that you can. I think that you, you will hopefully live uh, a healthier lifestyle than somebody that just eats whatever they want to <laughs> without any thought that goes into it. Well, it really is about choices, you know, because at the end of the day, if people are properly educated, they can make choices that are paleo and make them easily because I don't know about you, but now that I'm armed with all this information, it's so easy for me, you know? I mean, I could be, not that I eat at Subway or any you know, any of these places, but if I had to go to Subway, guess what? They have a salad and they have chicken and they have some, you know, you could probably choose, a, 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 you know, oil and vinegar dressing, you know, if you had to. Um, so I think it's, it's sad when people go, oh, it's too hard to go paleo because it's not. You know, it's just, it's really about being properly educated, and, and that's what I love about what you're doing. Um, so your, your new movement is kind of called the Paleo Way, um, mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's what you're doing with uh, Luke, who focuses probably more on the fitness, and you're doing more of the food, which I, I think is awesome, because it's so needed. <laughs> yeah, and we've got Nora Gagardis as well, and we've got Helen Patteron, uh, the naturopath I talked to talk to you about before. And we've also got Trevor Hendy, who is a ex seven time world champion Ironman who talks about uh, mind body spirit connection. Awesome. And uh, again, what I was talking about before, it's a package, you know, we've got the, we've got the food or the diet. We've also got the movement, we've got the, the science with Nora, we've got the, the, I guess, uh, the spiritual journey, which we have with Trevor and, um, and we've got the naturopath or the, the natural therapy therapist with just Helen and we've also got um, uh, wonderful input from, from people all around the world. We've got shopping lists and meal plans and awesome. exercise routines and, and it's a beautiful program and, and we're, we're, we, we keep evolving it. We're just about to release um, an autoimmune uh, protocol version of it plus a GAPS version of it as well. Um, we're constantly trying to and, and, and a Thermomix, I don't know whether you've got Thermomixes in America uh, <laughs> but it, it's a it's a device that thousands, of, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people have got around the world, which makes cooking apparently easier. Um, <laughs> but we're always trying to try to keep evolving this program and keep it really uh, budget friendly for people to be able to adopt, uh, because we know that if one person adopts this lifestyle, they're going to tell five, five or ten of their friends, and maybe one or two of them will, will try it out in the next year, yeah. and then. This is a grassroots movement, and I understand how how um, how the ripple effect is going to happen. And I've I've always said I, I believe in ten to twenty years time this will be considered normal, <laughs> and it, it it will it has to be because the science is going to be uh, irrefutable, and yeah. uh, I dare say within five to ten years if our government dietary organizations do not adapt to the current research, then there will be um, class action lawsuits. Yeah. And once that starts happening, we're going to see a, 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 a quite a dramatic shift and a quite a, a dramatic um, um, uh, adoption of this. And it, it'll be considered normal. <laughs> I, I, I have no doubt about it and 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 the thing that we need to talk about with paleo as well which which often gets um put aside um and the way that we promote paleo and, I, and i'll define it for if anyone wants to understand what what, what we're promoting you know sure. it's a small amount of well-sourced meat you know size of your palm of your hand it's an abundance of beautiful above the ground vegetables preferably um it's including some fermented vegetables, hopefully daily, into your into your diet uh, for good gut bacteria. It's about having some bone broth, uh, hopefully daily, maybe a cup of it again for for gut health. And it's about including really good quality fats into your diet, whether that's from uh, land or sea animals or from uh, uh, plant uh, plant based. Um, and that's it. it. It's basically, and then just eliminating any foods that can cause inflammation. And as we know, uh, the biggest, um, uh, the biggest triggers for people is dairy, uh, grains, legumes, and, and of course, refined sugars. And that's it in a nutshell. And it doesn't have to be any more difficult to, uh, to explain than that. Yeah. And, uh, because we know how important the gut health is and it's all about it, it, repairing our guts 
so right. that we can absorb the minerals properly, so that so that we so that it's doing its its proper job, so that uh, the pathways are all working as they're meant to, um, and it's it's simple. It really is simple. Oh, I agree. I mean, I think it really all I mean starts with proper gut health, and, and by eliminating these uh, inflammatory foods, that's your gut starts to be less inflamed, and guess what? Your stomach starts to shrink because there's less inflammation. You start intaking more fiber from vegetables, you start being cleaned out a little bit more, and once again, your stomach keeps shrinking. You know, it's uh, it's just, it, it becomes so easy at a certain point to kind of maintain your ideal weight with the paleo diet because of the foods you're consuming, and I think, you know, it's it's something to be said to really stay away from the diets that are endorsing an overabundance of too much fat, which leads to too many calories, which can lead to weight gain. It's really about moderation, you know, and not over overdoing any one thing, you know, and, and not too many carbs, not too much sugar, not too much fat, but just eating a well-balanced paleo diet. I mean, for me, I always explain paleo as no gluten, no no grains, no dairy, and no legumes, and that includes like soy and peanuts, no no beans. Um, if you're going to have potatoes, have a moderate amount of sweet potatoes, and um, you know just keep the sugar to a real you know minimum, and you're going to have awesome success. One site that I always use, um, I really don't usually endorse uh, sites, but um, a little secret that I have is a site called nutritiondata.self.com. It's a really neat uh, site, and you can look up corn or beans or any ingredient that is known to man on this site. And um, it actually tells you the glycemic load, the inflammation factors, how good that ingredient is for weight loss. And it's a great tool uh, for people to affirm what we're saying is true because the ingredients that we use in the paleo diet are not inflammatory. And this, once again, proves it by showing you the actual nutritional, the macros of each and every single ingredient. And uh, it's just a, such a useful tool, especially when you're trying to lose weight by knowing what ingredients to, to consume. And uh, it's just one more, one more piece of evidence. <laughs> And, and what I'd like to say is always work with a healthy health professional that, that understands how the body works. Um, because what you tapped on there as well is you know, some people with autoimmune issues, they need to take uh, another couple of steps. They might need to take out nightshades. They might need to take out nuts. They might need to take out eggs from their diet to yep. see if any of these are causing inflammation as well, um, which, you know, uh, uh, these can cause inflammation in a lot of people. So it's... It's a journey for people to work out and for them to heal their guts first and foremost and then potentially reintroduce some of these foods that may, that may have caused issues or, or leave them out altogether. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that there's different templates, you know, where you have a paleo autoimmune protocol template. I think you have a paleo template for weight loss. Um, I think that there is even a, a template which I hear is being called uh, uh, Pegan, which is for paleo vegans uh, that's being introduced. And I, I would say that is okay, believe it or not, if you do not feel like you know harming animals is something that's right for you. Because we both know that the paleo diet is the best way to eat, but although it could just be a life choice where you feel like, hey, you know what, I don't want to hurt any living you know, animal, and, and, and I think it, it's okay to include these sort of peoples, but to give it its own name, you know, to not try to, to change or alter what paleo is, but to just give it its own name. I kind of like this whole pegan thing. I, it's, kind of, uh, it's kind of fascinating to me. It's kind of incorporating what vegans uh, believe in and also following a paleo template. Um, because then you really have something for everyone, you know, because we make all these, you know, paleo products all the time and all the vegans are like, hey, what about me? You know, I still want to eat this way. I want to have an anti-inflammation diet, but you don't have any products for me. I'm like, all right, well, these are the pro products that you can have. And we actually started labeling our paleo products, paleo and vegan on the front, because, um, you know, we don't want to exclude anybody. And we, we, you know, we totally, you know, understand that, you know, um, paleo isn't for everyone. Well, I think, uh, I mean, anyone that's vegan or paleo or vegetarian or whatever it may be definitely has the same uh, the same philosophy or, or, or similar philosophies where we want a, a healthier population, we want a, a healthier planet, and we want better treatment of animals. 
Um, and, and we can all agree on that, for sure. Um, and and that, it, uh, that it comes down to potentially religious beliefs or, or, or uh, philosophical beliefs. And everyone is entitled to their own opinion and belief system. Um, and I, I never have a... I, you know, it comes down to a personal choice, and if that makes you happy, then go for it, and work out what works best for you and, and what you're happy with. And, uh, and we have a beautiful life to live on this planet, and uh, we, it's all about connection and education and evolution. And, and um, it's been an honor talking yeah. with you today. Yeah, it's been a, a great talking with you. Um, everybody can find you at thepaleoway.com. Um, and uh, I really love what you're doing. You're definitely practicing what you're preaching. And uh, thank you so much for uh, spending this time with us. It's been great. Thank you so much. All right.